Hi people, this is Matt Black. We're going to take an in-depth look at the cold cutter, which is the most powerful and complex module in Jam and comprises several sub-modules. Here we are in the play screen, which is your main performance part of Jam. And the bottom right quadrant, the cold cutter slot rack, with its column of four copy left symbols, that's the cold cut logo, controlling whether each channel one to four is sent to the cold cutter. And then 16 slots, that's slot zero, that's a special one. And then slots 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. What these are are sort of presets for the cold cutter, which do various slicing and modulation functions. By default, the first seven, excepting slot zero, so slot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they're set to toggle, because either on or off. When you touch them, you turn them on, touch them again to turn them off. To the right of them, these eight, we term super fills, because they're more in the nature of fills that you might do at the end of the bar set. And they're set to momentary action, which means they're only active as long as you hold them down. If a toggle slot is on, and then you press a momentary slot, once you hold a momentary slot down, it overrides a toggle. When you let go of it, it flicks back to the one that was on toggle. You can change any of the slots to be momentary or toggle, and do a lot more in the edit slot page, which we'll look at in a bit. If we take, for example, this super fill, you see how when I release the super fill, because it's momentary action, it swaps back to the toggle slot one, which was active before. That's a more obvious one that loops a 16th. That one's a reverse. This is a triplet. This is a glitch. That engages a scratch effect. The cold cutter can turn effects on and off, and it can also rearrange slices of the sample. Let's just break it down to the simple beat. If we go to the cold cutter page, we don't see very much. Why? Because no slot is active. Let's turn slot one on. Now that brings up the slice sequencer. The slot racks in the bottom right. At the top you've got other controls and here you've got different sub-modules of the cold cutter. Currently this is showing the slice sequencer for the beats channel. Down there on the left is where you select which channel sequences are displayed. The other channels aren't shown. Why not? Because chain from beats is on. This toggle up here underneath the BPM, wherever that first channel is called, that chain icon will show its name. And if that is on, you won't be able to see the sequences for the other channels because they're being overridden by the Beats channel. If I turn it off, you can see the selectors for the other channels there on the left. The point worth knowing, a channel's sequences won't run unless that channel is active and on. Let's just look at the synth channel. It's basically a one bar 16th step sequencer. And each slice is a slice of the sample that's playing at the moment, as you can see from the waveform. Now if we reset that, let's start off with a clean slate. Let's leave bar loop on, so we're just dealing with one bar. We'll come back to that in a minute. These are the slices of the current beat. Now we can also just draw on this matrix to change the sequence order. If I put those, then slice one is being repeated for every step. And I can just draw around happily coming up with different versions of that sample. It's a bit like a one bar step drum machine, but the different drum sounds are different slices within the sample that's currently playing, 16 of them. Say I decide I like that pan, you can see we're on slot one. If I save that as a patch, let's call it slot one. You see, we'll get the message, saving patch with cold cut to slot zero. And you see the slot rack swapped over now to use slot zero. See, you can see slot one's exactly the same now as slot zero. The reason is, whenever you save a patch, the state of the cold cut is saved using slot zero. Slot zero is the polymorphically perverse, the special slot that's polymorphic, that can have more than one state. So each patch saves the state of slot zero, copying into it whatever slot was previously active when the patch was saved. The other slots are monomorphic, they can only have one state per set. If I change them, they'll be changed throughout that whole set. So whenever I want to save a slot from the cold cutter, by saving it in a patch, it will save it via slot zero and it will recall it into slot zero.
The reason we did this was because the alternative was to save all the slots into each patch, which was unwieldy and inefficient and also potentially confusing. We thought this is the best compromise of power, flexibility and clarity. This way, using the 64 patches, you can have up to 64 cold cutter presets accessed via the slot zero mechanism and still have the other 15 slots available at any time, like lenses that you can switch in. Let's have a look at these sliders here. They provide ways of automatically shuffling the slices in the slice sequencer. This is a technique we developed in the 90s and it's become more widely known as buffer shuffle. You can regard the step sequencer as a buffer of slices which can be reordered, repeated, reversed or omitted. Firstly, how much is that sequence rearranged from the default of slice 1, slice 2, slice 3 to 16? As we turn slice up, it reorders them and they become progressively more disordered with respect to the original. Trigger and re-trigger provide other functions of randomization and I'm not quite sure even I quite understand what they do. Different ways of controlling which parts of the sequence are shuffled. Evolve enables us to do automatic reshuffles every so many bars. If Evolve 0 is on, no automatic evolves happen. If Evolve 1 is on, means every bar, an automatic reshuffle will take place. See how it's shuffling every bar now. If I hear something I really like, I found the perfect beat. Quickly hit freeze before the program changes it. Then if I save that into a patch, it'll recall that exact same sequence when I recall it. Now if I put Evolve on 3, that's the maximum setting, rather illogically, that means every 4 bars will get a reshuffle. And this is a random technique which we like, which is randomize it, then hold it, so your mind gets onto it as a groove, and it's not just shifting chaos all the time. Let's turn Automatic Evolve off now to Evolve 0. Mute controls the chance that a slice will not be played. Mute is useful for making space. So if we have that over half, you see a majority of the slices are being not played. And that reminds me that you can turn slices on and off manually by tapping them. Reverse is the chance that slices will be reversed. Now we've been ignoring the other channels. Let's have a look at them. Because chain from beats is off now, the other channels are available. Let's put the synth back on. And here we select the synth slice sequencer. Turn the beats off so you can just hear now what that's doing. If we turn Auto Evolve on. Put it on Evolve 4, there we see. Every four bars we'll get a reshuffle. And... Two... Three... Four. Now you can hear, comparing the beats rhythm to the synth rhythm, they're similar but slightly different. So that set of sliders control the buffer shuffling for all the channels that the cold cutters turned on for, but the exact sequence that they generate will be different from channel to channel because it's random. Now if I turn on chain from beats, you'll hear that the rhythm of all the channels is now the same. That's because the step sequencer for beats channel, channel 1, is being applied to all the other channels. So they're playing in synchrony with channel 1. Here's an advanced tip. Hold down shift and double tap any of the cold cutter slots to automatically force a reshuffle. We find that that chain function comes up with interesting sort of reinforced grooves where the channels are all playing the same rhythm. Let's unchain them. Let's change the samples for a sec. So, whatever samples are playing, the cold cutter will be applied to those samples. We found that you can get a lot of interesting variation out of this quite simple idea, cutting the loops into slices, reshuffling the sequence of those slices. So a quick look at the bar function. All the sequences in Jam are one bar sequences, basically the 16 steps in each sequencer. Now samples can be longer than one bar. For example, this drum loop is actually a four bar loop and you can see the sample waveform changing slightly. When you go to the clip panel, you can see the effect of the cold cutter jumping around mixing the slices up. Bar 1, bar 2, bar 3, bar 4. So these one bar sequences are superimposed over the sample no matter how many bars there are in the sample. 
the sound will change as it steps through the bars of the sample. The sequence will be dependent on the cold cutter, i.e. which slices in that sample will be played, reversed or omitted. To use just one bar of the currently playing samples, turn bar loop on. If I want to reset or edit a cold cut slot, I use the edit page. And all these other cold cutter submodules, they work on a per slot basis. So those 16 slots there on the right, each have their own step sequences, modulation sequences, which we'll come to in subsequent tutorials. Big love from Cold Cuts. And sorry, this was a bit of a long one. And there's more Cold Cutter stuff to come. Thanks for your attention.